The art of doing nothing using profiling to optimize code. Does anybody know how to profile their code? Hands? Okay, okay. So hopefully some people uh, will learn something today. Um, I'm lazy and I've been told that good programming is being lazy, so maybe correlation, causation. A quick introduction. Um, uh, je je m'excuse. Uh, J'habite en Allemagne depuis uh, après, uh, 20 ans. Je parle pas souvent le français. Et, et alors, je fais de, le, le présent, la présentation en uh, anglais. Mais vous posez les questions en français après, s'il y a des temps. Et euh, je peux essayer euh, de répondre. OK. Quick introduction. Um, I work on OpenPixel. It's a library for reading and writing Excel files. It works. Um, so, and I've been maintaining it uh, since 2013. Uh, profiling. Ask yourself, do you ever ask yourself, is my code fast enough? How often does it run? Does it need to be any faster? If it runs once a day or less, probably not. If this is the case, do nothing and please leave the room. You're not, you don't need to learn anything. There might be some situations when you want to do something like this, the performance on the, of a particular call, somebody using our library said, well, it's taking nearly 500 seconds to run. Did some work on it, and we got it down to about 14 seconds. Just see some numbers there related to that, just to uh, what we did on it. That's the kind of performance improvement that you might want to see, and it might be worth investing some time in it. The actual code that was running this was just something that ran one time. But it's nice to have a real-world example with your library to say, OK, I'll take some time to see if I'm improving it, because other people are going to have the same kind of performance requirements. Just looking at the bit of code that was largely featured in this, don't bother reading it. It's in the source. It's just you can sort of, you might get an idea. This is quite spaghetti code. It's pro it probably smells bad. You know. This is going to be, a, you can able to make this faster without too much trouble. But that's not what I'm on, this is about, you know, what is profiling? You may go, I think my code might be running a bit slow. It may be using too many resources. There's no need to guess. You can profile. Profiling will tell you what is running slow, and then you can work out and make it whether you can run fast. A word of warning. There's a phrase in English, measure twice, cut once. You're going to have to make sure that you don't destroy what your code does. What's the best way to do that? Add tests first. If you want to refactor your code, have tests. Have 100% unit test coverage if possible. If not, you're going to break something. And you're going to have to fix it later. And you might not have the time later to fix it. So if you're going to do this, add tests first. OK, find bottlenecks. You're not going to try and make everything faster. Most of your code is likely to be fast enough, good enough. You want to find those bottlenecks that are slowing stuff down. This is kind of stuff that runs very frequently or just takes a long time. Don't guess. Don't take good advice. Always measure. There's lots and lots of good advice about writing good, fast code. But if you go in with the mindset, I'm going to fix this because this is what I need to do. I need to remove this loop. I need to make this loop faster. Loops you'll hear in Python are slow. It's not actually true. They're not really slow compared with C loops. But we tend to have lots of them. We tend to run them a lot. So we tend to have very big loops. That's the sort of thing when you want to be looking at and saying, OK, can I do anything about this? But basically, um, you're going to look at particular bits of code. You're going to find this little function, this method, this class, this call, this is slow. This is what I need to work on. Don't try and do it all at once. It's a waste of time. You'll find that you're getting 1%, 10% gains on something that runs once a day, once a week. But 
fast code is usually better, is usually more readable, and your next code will be better. You'll spend less time refactoring and making your next code faster. Keep it simple. Profiling is part of the standard library. You call it from the C profile. You pass it a function. You pass it a callable, um, and you uh, uh, and you you tell it what kind of how you want the time doing. The standard is to do the cumulative time. I find total time that's spent in a particular function more useful. But you know when you're looking at it, you'll decide. It's also really nice that it, you can store the results. Have a look at that in a bit later. Um, what you want to do is gather enough data to be useful and do it in a reasonable time frame. So if you have something that takes an hour, don't profile that. Break it down into something that takes a few minutes at most, because otherwise you won't be doing anything productive. You'll just be waiting for it to return. So this is the kind of output. I've shortened it because actually there are over 100 entries, but we don't need to see them all. What you can see on this, don't worry about the detail, all the calls that take in total take more than a tenth of a second. Anything below this, I can optimize the shit out of it. It's not really going to make much difference because it's only ever 10% of my time compared to everything else. So we can look at this, and this is going to tell us, and if it's your code, you're going to have a fair idea of some of those calls. So let's highlight some of that just to sort of say, OK, we're running. We've got, what is it, th over 3 million function calls. That's quite a lot. But where are they? I've got 750,000 calls of is instance, and I've got some stuff calling to func tools. Hmm. I've got somewhere to look at. Can I reduce the number of those, f those calls to is instance? Can I remove any of the other calls? It, that's where I should be looking at. So I already know where to look at. So I've got, I may have 100 entries here. I've got, we've got about 20. But I already know there's a couple of calls I, I, I should be looking at. OK, I mentioned you can store the profiling. It's really nice. You can introspect your statistics. So you can dump the logs. I normally I'll admit I just sort of tend to run this in a terminal, look at it, and say, hmm, that's good. But for something more complicated, you can store the statistics. You can inspect them and say, what is calling this particular function? Where is the work happening? If you can't see it in your own code, if you're not familiar with it. Um, that's really quite nice because it, it, it shows you the power of Python intro introspection. Um, so this, th in this particular case, this is what happens in OpenPixel when somebody just assigns a variable. And we do some casting. We sort of do, OK, how, do we, how are we going to store this later? We need to know whether it's a string. We need to know whether it's a, a number. We need to know whether it's a Boolean. We need to know whether it's a formula. And we do this a lot. If you're going to create a million cells or read a million cells, this happens a lot. That's why we had all those function calls. So what are we going to be? We're going to be looking at doing nothing. That's what we want to do. We're doing 700. We've got 3 million function calls. We want less than this. And we're going to get this by doing nothing. So I stole a term from this. It's about megawatt, which is a nice way to account for energy efficiency 20 or 30 years ago from now. So I, let's just have the idea of a nega call. We want to increase our nega calls. We've got th 3 million function calls. If we can get something like a million nega calls, we're getting somewhere. The function you don't call is always faster than the one you do, always. And in terms of memory and also time, object creation in Python is quite expensive. So in certain situations, you'll be wanting to look to create small, fewer objects. And this includes, actually, things like collections, diction, lists, uh, lists, lists and dictionaries. So we can do better. We did some, I did some optimization. Oh, and we're down to 1.5 million function calls. We're 2 million nega calls. This is quite a result. And we're down from. Four and a half seconds to two and a half seconds, and you can all you can see is all those calls now that are still over for the same work. There are still there are over a tenth of a second, so we've got fewer of those to look at. We've still got stuff there, you know, but we're much we're already much faster. Um, uh, I'll we'll look at a bit later what we actually what largely resolved in it, but it wasn't a great deal of work to do this. We identify you identify where the hotspots are, and you say, you know what, 
I know I did this one night just to get it done. Working code is great code. Even if it's untested, you're going to be using it. Other people are going to be using it. Don't worry too much about it. You will want to add tests later. The more tests you have, the better. But, you know, OK, we can do better. Oh, wow, two and a half million nega calls. We're less than a million function calls now. And we're down to one and a half seconds from four and a half. So actually, I removed uh, LRU caching here, because it turned out what we were doing, much better just to pre-generate. It's the in Excel converting from um, uh, numerical indices to the uh, column indices in Excel. Do it once, because you only have a need to do the, for all the values once, because actually LRU caches in terms are slower than calculating it each time, so you can do it once and you get it all every time you need it. It runs a lot. OK, we can go faster. What, 600,000 function calls? And we're just over a second? Oh, and that's what, what am I going to try and optimize now? You know, we, we've gone down 30%. We, we've gone 30 percent faster than what we had before. You know, and we're happy with the result. I mean, I'm not going to spend any more time optimizing this. There are other things I can do to improve performance, but I'm not going to get it much, much better than this because that's going to require completely rewriting it. Yes, there is rewriting it. Somebody's telling me the other day, they've got this file and, well, OK, even with 64-bit Python, it still needs 7.5 gigabytes of memory. And they broke it, stopped it running after 55 minutes. OK? I hope people aren't putting this much data in Excel every day, because it's not a good data format, but people are using it. And I can't solve that problem quickly. I have to rewrite a lot of code to do that. But, you know, I've got somewhere to get to. I've got a good, I know that a good place to start from. Just comparing the book before and after code, hopefully you can see that the on the left, you know, before we, uh, before we got to the makeup salsa, honestly, it was a bit of spaghetti code, lots of branching. Um, lots of inline um, uh, object creation, actually. And afterwards, hopefully, you can see that the code branching is cleaner and we're doing less. I mean, hopefully, you can see that. It's true uh, that we, we're actually doing less. Um, and one of the most important optimizations in this is just reordering the branching. The branch that needs to run the most often needs to be at the top. In our case, uh, the code path to determine whether we've got a number. Unfortunately, because in Python, a Boolean is a number, so you can add true to four and you'll get five. Old people think, well, that's great. You know, I go, mm, can't I have a bool type? Because that, that's not a number, because I would get more speed out of it. I can't do that. But that's probably, along with some other conversions, because that's the most common code path. That's the easiest bit of optimization. My code's better afterwards. So. Let's summarize. We've gone from 4.5 seconds to 1.2 seconds. Um, so, you know, we're, 300, we're three times as fast. For, well, we're nearly, we're nearly four times as fast. Wow. From 3 million to 600,000 uh, function calls. So, reducing function calls does pr produce a near one-to-one -one performance boost. But don't go starting writing your code trying to reduce function calls. Write OO code, simple uh, uh, separation of responsibilities, encapsulation, because you're only going to want to start looking at re reducing function calls in those bottlenecks. It's a truism, fewer function calls, fewer method lookups, fewer namespace lookups will make your code faster, but quite often, these aren't happening very often. You know, if that's necessary, you might want to start looking at inlining stuff. But only ever when you're looking at a bottleneck. It's a waste of time otherwise. And we've done all this by doing nothing. I've tried to uh, make some time up. Les questions.
How do you you do when uh, there's no clear uh, way to uh, both make the code cleaner and faster? Like, if you want to make it faster, it don't has to ask, be dirtier. Don't ask, don't ask a hypothetical question. Okay, I've seen cases where I, uh, the only way, uh, after profiling, the only way I saw that was a, I was able to, to make it uh, faster when I needed to make it faster was removing, uh, well, Removing functions that uh, made the, the code uh, easier to read and things like that. So. Okay, that may be what you need to do. But hopefully, this is one function in a thousand. Mm -hmm. it's, if it isn't, then your code's bad. <laughs> Maybe that part of the code was bad, but then... No, I, I, I can't do... This is mm -hmm. the point about the good advice. Look at your particular thing. I'll find the bottlenecks and eliminate them. If you need to get, if you need to get that bit of code to run 10 times faster for your application, then do what it takes to get that. If you, you, if you have lots of instances in this, okay, it may be something I'm just not familiar with, but I suspect that that means that you should be looking at a slightly different design because separation of responsibility almost always means fewer calls. You, you may find that you've you created a pipeline that you can short circuit. I don't know. But don't do the hypotheticals. Take your code, find this is the bottleneck, and then do what it takes to fix that. Okay? Merci.